Finally tonight, after a look at some of the more heavy-handed issues around the globe, we decided to take a look at, for our final segment in the world of sports. Lots of headlines made around the world this year at the very top of the list. The video of American football player Ray Rice punching his fiance unconscious. It sparked a national and international discussion on the issue of domestic violence. Which is one of the subjects we're talking with and we're joined to talk about the top headlines of 2014. We have sports journalist Didier Morais, Shana, Re Shana Renee, who's the founder of AllSportsEverything.com and Arise New Sports contributor, Andrew Rosario. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Um, the Ray Rice incident, it's part of what we were talking about. There's a digital age now where everything is captured on videotape. And this really, this really not only shook athletes, but the institution of football itself, didn't it, Andrew? It really did. I mean, um, when we first heard about the allegations of the domestic abuse, uh, we really didn't know what to make of it. But when that video came out, it just blew everything up. Uh, Shane, do you really think that the league dealt with it in a way that, that was to your satisfaction? Absolutely not. I think that when the first video was released, we could fill in the blanks for ourselves, even though we didn't actually see the physical act occurring. Mm -hmm. She's unconscious. And I think that was enough for us to say a two-game suspension was insufficient. And then when the second video was released, that really created an uproar because now they backtracked and, you know, it just showed a lot of indecision and poor judgment, judgment on uh, Commissioner Roger Goodell's part. Now, the NFL is entering its playoffs, so um, viewership is going to go up. Right. So, you know, it's, if it isn't about the money, as Julian Phillips likes to say, it's about the money. Um, we're seeing these sort of, we're seeing these minute spots in the middle of the game. PSAs. PSAs for domestic violence. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that to you? I, I have a word for it, but you tell me <laughs> what you feel about that. I don't think it's effective. I think it's something that they're doing out of obligation. Um, I think it's just their way of saying, okay, we recognize that we messed up, so we'll throw these PSAs out there. To me personally, they seem disingenuous. Mm. Having actors starring in these PSAs, it just doesn't seem genuine to me. But um, I guess they have to start somewhere, and, and it, it's one step toward acknowledging that we need to have this conversation. Today, tell me about the reaction to, uh, to this incident, because domestic violence is universal. So it's, it can't, it's not only football players who have these issues. Um, is it something that other sports leagues around the world sort of took notice of, or is it something they just sort of put their hands up and say, oh, that doesn't involve me, so uh, it doesn't really matter? Absolutely. You saw the NBA, Adam Silver had an he had to deal with a New Orleans Pelicans player, even though he was a small-time player, but he acted decisively because he learned from Roger Goodell's mistakes and he suspended him for 24 games and he wasn't going to let, you know, whatever happened with the NFL happen to the NBA. And I think that's ultimately a, a good move and I think that's going to continue and spread out throughout uh, MLB as well. MLB has uh, already come out with some new regulations regarding domestic violence. Yeah, you, 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 I just want to say that, you know, I understand your point about feeling that the ads are a little ingen ingenuous, but I also think that the players, their commercials, I think strike home. I think hits the heart to what the message, because it's coming from the mm -hmm. players. Yeah. Now, you, you brought us to the, uh, to the NBA. They had a big scandal as well with the mm -hmm. releasing of a tape from um, the owner of L.A. Clippers, uh, Donald Sterling. Mm -hmm. Pretty racist uh, remarks that he made about his own players, about people who come to his games. Um, even though it resulted in the sale of his team, there's still controversy about how the evidence was obtained. Absolutely. I mean, you're getting recorded in your own home in a private conversation with your mistress. And although it was obtained illegally, in a sense, at the end of the day, Donald Sterling, by being an owner at that time, he is a face of the NBA. Owners, even though players, it's a player's league and the players are ultimately the faces, at the end of the day, how do you expect the players to play for an owner? And you saw how Chris Paul and Blake Griffin and a bunch of the Clippers were considering protesting and not playing the game in the playoffs uh, because of that situation. And we're going to come back to basketball in a second, but um, two big international events this year, hmm. um, the Sochi Olympics mm -hmm. in 2014 and the World Cup. Let's start with the Olympics quickly uh, with you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. did, it, did it go off well? Is it, was this a feather in the cap for Vladimir Putin? Um, I, I don't think so from the standpoint that it was the most expensive uh, Olympics in, in the history, over $81 million. Mm -hmm. uh, the infrastructure was a problem throughout. Uh, the weather mm -hmm. was like 70 degrees at times there and that 
wreaked havoc when it came to some of the outdoor events. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at the, the competition and the games, I think that I think they put a feather in the cap from that standpoint. So let's fast forward then to the other big world event, the World Cup. Um, spectacular event mm -hmm. in Brazil. It mm -hmm. was great. Loved it. <laughs> uh, you know, we watched it. But in the shadow of it now is how the next World Cup got its bid um, accepted, and it has dirtied the world of football, hasn't it? Absolutely. There's obviously a lot of controversy right now regarding the, the following World Cups, but at the end of the day, you saw how there was controversy heading into Brazil. There was a lot of protests heading in, mm -hmm. but ultimately end, ended without, a, without any issues, even though for Brazil, with their team unraveling and choking, I think for them, they ended up getting their national embarrassment, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things where even with, uh, we saw with Sochi, there are those controversies heading early on, but ultimately they found a way to persevere. Oscar Pistorius on trial for killing his ex-girlfriend, mm. found guilty, only going to serve five years right. in prison. What do you think about the end of that one? That sentencing was shocking to me. I think, you know, just this whole story, he was an Olympic hero, and then two years later, he's on, fi on trial for murder. Um, I think the biggest thing to come out of that is that there is an appeal that's going to happen, and then, and he may be tried for murder, retried for murder, and sentenced um, more harsher than uh, five years. So we'll see how that plays out in okay. the coming year. Thank you so much, Andrew Rosario. Uh, Didier, <laughs> Didier, I just know you both. And, and, uh, and, and Didier, Didier Moraes, thank you very much. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's all good. And tell me your name. Shana Renee. Shana Renee. <laughs> yes, the anchor Thank you so much for joining us here on Arise America.